Welcome CF students to the summer tour! So, we're gonna jump straight into this, but before we get there, we're gonna go to Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. It says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Let's pray really quick. Father God, thank you for everything you've done for us in our lives, Lord. Bless this summer tour as we start this thing off and that we could all just have fun, that the house wars would be amazing and that no one would get injured in any of these games that we're gonna play. Can you take us through these messages that you will be guiding us through? Father God, and teach us a little bit every single day. In your holy name we pray, amen. Man, it is amazing to be back with the summer tour. If you don't know what that is, gosh, you are missing out. So here's the deal. Every single summer, well, not every single summer. Since last year, uh, we started this thing called Summer Tour, where we are traveling from campus to campus, everyone going to one campus. It's like a gigantic rally, but for four weeks in a row. So we're kicking this off at our Palmetto Bay location. What does this consist of? This consists of house wars. So we're just battling each other in different challenges and games, and there's a whole brand new point system. Last year, last year, West Kendall won. It's, uh, Okay, but we're hoping that we're gonna have a brand new winner. We have all brand new colors, brand new team names, brand new hot fire merch that's coming up and a brand new series called Amor. Ah, mucho, mucho amor. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but what that translates to is love. Amor means love. So what is it that we're talking about in this new series? Dating. Now, I know sometimes dating can be a little cliche, especially in the church world. Uh, and most of the time, the message that comes from student ministry about dating is don't do it because you're not old enough. You shouldn't be dating at this age. And while I agree with this statement wholeheartedly, I also know that you guys are going to be doing these things anyways. So whether dating is on your radar or it's nowhere near you, or you're still looking for the love of your life, we want you guys to date responsibly. We want you guys to have a godly perspective on this and most, most of all, we want you guys to understand that you don't need to look for something that you already have, okay? So throughout this summer tour, we're gonna to be talking about this and there's gonna be so many other things and we want you guys to be present on a Friday night. Don't have FOMO. Don't get the fear of missing out because you're gonna miss out on some really, really great stuff. Now, when it comes to dating, again, there's a little, there's, there's some tricky stuff that happens with that. Why am I pulling up my phone? Because sometimes dating is a lot like looking through that front camera of your phone. You take a picture of a huge crowd and then you just start zooming in on all these different things and all these different people and you're trying to pick out the person that you think looks the best. You're looking at their hair, you're looking at how they're dressed, the shoes they're wearing, what kind of nose they have, are their ears too big? What kind of eye, like what are the color of their eyes? Do they wear glasses? Are they wearing contacts? You were always looking at the outside things for people. Do, or even if you start thinking, do they have the same interests that I do? Do they have the same hobbies that I do? Do, they, do we like the same thing? Maybe they listen to jazz music. Maybe they listen to rock. Maybe they're an EDM type person or rap. I don't like any of those things. I'm a country person. Whatever it is, we're constantly looking for the one. You're constantly looking for the one. And this is where it gets bad. Because sometimes looking for the one, we get trapped in our head. All these different thoughts of what that one should be, who the one should look like, what they should be wearing, how they should even talk, what their family looks like. And it builds up all this anxiety within us. You get so tense and you start getting worried and it doesn't let you sleep. And then you start dating around and you're like, is this person it, is this person it? Maybe it's not, maybe it is, you don't know. But here's the important thing that we need to know. And this is your main idea for today. Becoming the one is better than finding the one. Becoming the one is better than finding the one. You see, becoming the one takes our camera from pointing it outwards you're gonna turn on that selfie camera, you're gonna look at yourself. And you're gonna ask yourself the question, am I the one? Am I the right type of person? Should I even be dating if I'm not ready for this? Where does my life need to be? What does my spiritual life need to look like? How do I even become the one? So this is the question that we're gonna to answer today. And we're gonna answer that through Matthew chapter six, verses 25, 31 through 30. Three. So if you can open up your Bibles, go to Matthew chapter 6. It says, Therefore I tell you, do not be anxious about your life, 
what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Is, night, is, life, is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? Therefore, do not be anxious saying, what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the Gentiles seek after all these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them all. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added on to you. So how do we become the one? I'm gonna give you guys some steps. Okay, a few, just a few key points for you. And the first one is, we become the one by seeking God first. Matthew chapter six dropped it right there. But seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. Now I'm gonna tell you this. I am a simp. I'm a married simp. I simp after my wife, but I'm a simp nonetheless. What is a simp? You're a hopeless romantic. You think that love is gonna come your way no matter what, no matter how many times you've been let on, no matter how many times you've been brokenhearted, no matter the struggles that you have to go through in a relationship, you believe that love is constantly going to come for you, okay? And at 23, I went through a really bad breakup, still simped on the girl, okay? Because again, I still thought that I had to, search, I had to seek after that one but I wish that someone would have come and told me this verse. I wish that someone would have come and said, hey, you're looking after the wrong thing. You need to go seek God first. You're not in the right state right now. You just got your heart broken. You're simping all over this girl. You don't know what you're doing anymore. You need to stop and you need to refocus yourself and you need to go seek God in his kingdom. This is the first step in becoming the one. Seeking God first. Now, I had a couple of friends that were like, hey, go do this. I'm like, okay, but how do I do that? What does that even look like, right? How do I even seek God's kingdom? What am I supposed to do? How do I start this? Well, another part of becoming the one means building a relationship with Jesus. Building a relationship with Jesus. I started researching all these things and I was like, okay, if I'm gonna become the one, I'm gonna seek God's kingdom, I'm gonna build, I'm gonna build my relationship with Jesus first to become the one instead of searching for the one, I need to figure out how to do this. And one of my friends pointed me to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. I want you to be free from anxieties. The unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to please the Lord. But the married man is anxious about worldly things, how to please his wife, and his interests are divided. And the unmarried or betrothed woman is anxious about the things of the Lord, how to be holy in body and spirit. But the married woman is anxious about worldly things, how to please her husband. I say this for your own benefit, not to lay any restraint upon you, but to promote good order and to secure your undivided devotion to the Lord. So I was trying to figure out how to become the one. I got pointed towards, I have to seek God's kingdom first. Well, if, if I'm seeking for God's kingdom, what does that mean for me? It means I have to build my relationship with Jesus. Well, how do I do that? 1 Corinthians 7 tells us exactly how to do that. And on top of that, 1 Corinthians 7 is also telling us that we, he, Paul, God, wants us to be free from the anxiety of having to search for someone. He wants us to be free from those anxieties. He doesn't want you to be worried about finding the one. He doesn't want you to be worried about what the other person looks like or what hobbies they have or anything else like that. He wants you to be focused on who you are becoming and how you are serving him. This is the whole crux of this whole thing, okay? Now for, for me, this passage completely relieved me of any anxiety that I was having and I, I had gotten let on for like the last time and I was like, Lord, you know what? I'm done. If you have someone, if you have a woman out there for me, you're gonna have to bring her and you're gonna have to like blatantly tell her to tell me that she's interested in me because I'm just, I wanna focus on being the one. Meaning, I want to focus on being the one that is devoted to God. That's what this is about. So becoming the one means focusing on serving Jesus. Here we see in 1 Corinthians 7 that Paul says we are to be focused on the things of the Lord. We are anxious about the things of the Lord and how to please the Lord. Anxious here doesn't necessarily mean like, the worrisome type of anxiety. Anxious is more like you're excited to do things for God. You're excited to serve in ministry. I know plenty of you students that are doing this now. Some of you serve in students and doing production. Some of you are band members. Some of you guys 
are serving in the kids' ministry. Some of you guys do guest services. You're doing stuff with your parents or your family members on, on Serve Saturdays and all these different community engagement projects that we have. You guys are serving Jesus, but some of you are not. And what I'm doing is I'm encouraging you guys to actually go and do these things because that is what God wants you to do right now. Becoming the one means serving him. He wants you to focus your energy on him and his ministry and his kingdom. And in that, your relationship with him is going to be built up and you're going to be seeking his kingdom. Don't worry about all the other stuff. He will bring all those things in time, in his timing. What he wants you to do right now is just to focus on him. Build him up. Build yourself up. The second thing that we see here is that becoming the one means physically protecting yourself. If I go back into this passage of 1 Corinthians 7, he's literally talking about two things, how to be holy in body and spirit. That physical part, protecting your physical self, what does that look like? Eating healthy, sometimes. Exercising. I don't do a lot of cardio, but I do a lot of weightlifting. Why? Because I got little girls and I want to be able to toss them around all over the place. I'm kidding. Uh, being cautious of the things that are around you. Having self-awareness. Don't drink, smoke, or take anything that's going to cause you bodily harm or distort your mind. As hard as you can, resist sexual temptation. He, the, Lord, the Lord wants us to be physically healthy. Okay, we do get ailments sometimes, but we need to protect ourselves against these things. If Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 7 that he wants us to be holy in body, when I think of holiness for the body, it takes me to passages that say the body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Well, if I'm looking at the temple, if I go back into the Old Testament and I think of the Israelites and how they treated the temple, the temple was the best kept place in the entire city. It was adorned with gold. It was kept clean. There was only certain people that could go in there and they had to be appointed by God himself to go in there. There was only certain things that you could do in the temple. And any time that there was a, uh, uh, an exile or someone came and attacked one of the Israelite cities and they would crumble the temple, the first thing that the Israelites were worried about was how do we get the temple back up? How do we build the temple back up? How do we restore the temple to its former glory? Scripture is very explicit on what the temple is supposed to look like and how we're supposed to treat it and the respect and reverence that we're supposed to have for it. So if Scripture is telling me that my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, then that means that I have to protect my body because of that. I have to treat my body as holy. I have to treat my body with respect. I have to protect it from things that are going to try and corrupt it. This is how you become the one, protecting yourself bodily. The other thing that Paul says there is your spirit, how to be holy in spirit. Becoming the one means taking care of your soul. You got to do some soul care if you want to be the one. What does that look like? Daily reading, prayer, spending time with Jesus, thinking about what he's done for you, thinking about how he sacrificed his son for you, thinking about what he wants you to do in life, praying and asking him, Lord, what is the will that you want me to do? What is your will in my life? What direction do you want me to go? All of these are soul care things because it's introspective things and he wants you to be holy on those things. He wants you to think good about those things, not bad. He doesn't want, he doesn't want you to fill yourself with evil. He doesn't want you looking at stuff and talking crap and all these other things. He wants you to be constantly spitting out goodness. It's only going to come if you're constantly taking in goodness. It's only going to come if you're constantly taking in God's word. It's only going to come if you're constantly praying and in communication with him to find out what his will is and to understand his wisdom and everything else that comes with just focusing on him. See, if students, if you want to become the one, it starts with finding Jesus first. and pleasing him. And that's why becoming the one is better than finding the one. We, 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 we've looked at how to become the one, and there's a few different steps in there, but becoming the one is better than finding the one because you're finding Jesus. 
You're finding Jesus first. You're finding the eternal love that is going to be there for you for the rest of your life. You're finding the love that has been there for you the entire time. The reason why you don't have to go seek for something. You're finding the eternal love that sent his son down to die for you because you're a sinner. Because your sin will cause death. Because your sin will cause an eternal separation from him. You are finding that love that saves you and pulls you out and says, I want to have a relationship with you. I want to make you better. I want to take these things away from your life because these are, things are not good and I want to give you better things that are going to be more beneficial for you, that are going to lead you down a life of becoming the one that has already been given my glory, that has already been given my love, that has already been given my righteousness. He makes us new creations. He makes us the one. But that's only going to happen if you find him first. That's only going to happen if you take care of your soul. That's only going to happen if you're taking care of your body. That's only going to happen if you seek his kingdom first. Becoming the one is better than finding the one. And now I get it. I really do. You want to date around. You want to find the love of your life. That's cool. Don't forget that you need to build yourself up first. So, this is going to be a really, really good series. I really hope you guys are going to enjoy the rest of this because it only gets better from here. I'm just laying down some groundwork for you guys. I pray that for the next week, you would go home and you would really seek out God and start reading your Bible every single day and start doing some deep Bible study and look at what you need to cut out from your soul and from your body that's going to allow you to be more holy and truly seek after God's kingdom and truly seek to please the Lord. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for everything you've done for us in our lives, Lord. Thank you for just constantly sanctifying us in your word and in your love and in your blood, Father God. We pray that you would just continue to bless this summer tour. And as a selfish prayer, Father God, that West Kendall would not win this time. In your holy name we pray. Amen. We love you guys. I hope to see you here at our campus next Friday. Please don't miss out on summer tour.